Just over a year ago, I tried using a Raspberry Pi 4, this is an 8 gig version, as a network attached storage device, a NAS, and I found that performance wasn't really that good. Trouble is, you can be using the two USB 3 ports, which in theory, USB 3 is capable of doing 120 megabits per second, so that's about the speed that you need for a rotational hard drive, but yeah. Performance was only about half to a third of that, so it wasn't really very good. So instead, I'm trying a Odroid HC4. Now, the difference here is this has SATA ports on it. SATA ports, which can then communicate with hard drives at full speed. So yeah, it has a PCIe bus. So this was about £100 as well. So... Pretty similar in price to that Pi 4. Now performance is a lot different. This does actually go at the full rotational drive speed. Although I've noticed a little bit of a limitation on here. You really want to be using this as a NAS because it only has one USB port on it. So you can't attach a keyboard and mouse through the same USB port. Well, you could if you're using a hub, but yeah. Other than that, you've got a gigabit ethernet, HDMI output, and a power supply which uses a 15 volt 4 amp. So you can run everything in this one device. But yeah, let's take a look at performance. To start with, I'm looking at a drive mounted via SSH, and I'm going to try and copy a 768 meg file off of it. So I'll put that into my downloads folder. So yeah, copy and paste that. Oh yes, we can overwrite it, because I was trying this yesterday. And the speed of it, 75 meg a second there. So already it's better than the Raspberry Pi, but not brilliant, is it? I'm sure we could be doing better than this. So I'm going to copy a file back to it. So we'll take an Ubuntu server image and we'll just put that back across to here. Let's paste that file there. And performance, 3.1 mega second. You are joking me, aren't you? What? Okay, oh wow, we've got to oh, five megaseconds. That is abysmal. What is going on here? Now, I think this is an issue with the overhead of SSH encryption. So I'm not sure that processor is quite up to it, although I thought it would be. It's a 1.8 gigahertz quad-core processor, so I think that's actually better than the Pi 4 was. But even so, that is a pretty abysmal transfer speed. So I'm going to drop any notion of doing it via SSH. So instead, I've mounted the drive via NFS, would be the file sharing we could use in the Linux. And I might as well just try that test again. So I'm going to copy that file, that one gig Ubuntu server image, and I'm going to drop it back to that drive there. So yeah, that'd be the mounted hard drive. By the way, this is quite an old rotational hard drive. Uh, I'm trying to think how old it is, but it's uh, well in excess of 10 years old. So we can't expect huge speeds out of it. But apparently I just noticed that hit 170, 200 megasecond. <laughs> that's a little bit impossible. But look, either way, that's got there pretty damn quick. Let's try some image files now, which there's 133 on here, which in total was uh, 496 meg. So I'm going to copy those across via the SSH. Now I'm going to copy those across via NFS. Let's just create a new folder here. So just create that folder. Yeah, just call it that. New folder. And paste 133 items. So how are we getting on there? Uh, go on, tell me the rate. How fast are you going? I'm not sure. It's not telling me. Oh, fine. Be stubborn. What do you think, good or bad? Well, I'll leave the speed going as it is and just kind of talk around it. But yeah, that's obviously taking a little while there, isn't it? 133 files, but I don't think it's horrific. Okay, so there we go. It's finished. Okay, we'll do a comparison. I'm going to do the same copying here to a drive that's mounted inside the computer that I'm currently using. So that's... Well, it's not going to have the overhead of the network, but we'll get an idea of just how quick that is, and it's bloody instant, isn't it? <laughs> OK. 
okay so there is a bit of an overhead isn't there i decided to do one more comparison that is a network file copy because that was a bit unfair to do an internal file copy so yeah, this is a copy to my current nas and that was an nfs mounted folder so yeah that is definitely slower isn't it it definitely is slower and for the read speed using HD Palm on the device, we have 127 meg a second. Although a newer drive on my desktop suggests that the read speed can be faster nowadays. And even faster if you have an NVMe drive. I use the Ubuntu 20.04 minimal image that Odroid supply, which is pretty much Ubuntu server. Although I did try the Ubuntu 20.04 server ARM version, but that wouldn't boot. And I got stuck in the petite boot loader. But yeah, their own version seems to work okay, but it is a bit annoying to have to be reliant upon them supplying the image and not just being able to use the default Ubuntu image. Okay, so we've taken a look at performance. Now we'll take a look at the information about the device. So this is it on an American page. So at $73, where you have to purchase, or I've got the option to purchase, a power supply. So that's $9.40 for that. And this was it on the UK supplier. So that's actually more money typical that with everything in technology that UK prices seem to be at least the same if not more than dollars and the exchange rate just makes a mockery of it even further so yeah the power supply here was 12.99 a little bit more expensive so yeah, it has about 100 pounds well, I bought a couple of them 10 pounds for delivery so yeah, it works out a little bit more expensive than the Pi 4 Okay, and now looking at the actual specs. So yes, there is a PCIe bus. We have the ARM Cortex A55. That was quad core 1.8 gigahertz. It's got four meg of DDR3 memory. Oh, sorry, no, it's DDR4 memory. Just trying to make sense of that because you've got both specs written there. And there's an infrared sensor there. <laughs> Should you need one? But yeah, I guess if you're using it as a home theater PC, then that could be quite useful to have there if you're gonna use a remote control. But what are we comparing it to? A two bay NAS. So a two bay NAS for me, as I said, that was about hundred pounds to purchase. But I was looking on Amazon and I couldn't find a two bay NAS for that price. They're all a lot more expensive. So yeah, just scrolling down. Uh, I think there's one a bit cheaper here, but it turned out that it, yeah, they were, it's just a docking station. So that doesn't have a ethernet cable. It's just going to be what USB. So yeah, not the same thing. But yeah, two bay NAS, 150, well, 340. So what the specs is one that's 150. What, one gig of DDR4 memory? One, one gig, that, that's a quarter of what I've got here. I suppose CPU wise, that might be where you'll gain, but oh, no, 1.4 gigahertz CPU. <laughs> so that's worse, what are you paying for? <laughs> We got the enclosure, a bit more secure. It's a bit different than the toaster enclosure. Yeah, that's more. And I got 10 gig ethernet here. So yeah, that's that's a lot better. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you need that for enterprise or if you've got a lot of computers in your house or yeah, if you're dealing with a lot of data, I guess. But of course that's only useful if you've got cat seven cable, isn't it? Or does cat six work? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. I do actually have Cat6 around my house, but all the network cards and every other computer are gigabit. So 10 gig Ethernet wouldn't really be any benefit to me at this point. But yeah, that um, I think memory spec here was closer. Oh, 4 gig, expandable up to 8 gig. So 4 gig, same, but slower CPU. But of course, that's not really a true comparison. Intel CPU versus ARM. Oh, but I suppose I should mention that NAS I copied over to in this test. That is oh, that's an old AMD NAS. Just trying to think of the spec of it. Oh, is that 1.2 or 1 1.3, 1 1.4? 1 it's the lower end of the one gigahertz range. I think it is a quad core. My memory is going now. It is a pretty old CPU. But yeah, 25 watt fanless CPU and AMD A1 spec, so might be able to look it up. Anyway, I will try a newer hard drive in that. I've actually ordered a couple of eight terabyte hard drives 
Toshiba brand. I was thinking Toshiba have just not let me down at all. They've, they're in my current NAS, run perfectly. I've had mixed results from Seagate and Western Digital, but Toshiba, touch wood, have uh, run pretty well. So yeah, I'll go with those again. I don't know if there'll be a huge benefit in performance over this uh, pretty ancient Seagate drive. I don't think uh, speeds on rotational drives have particularly improved that well over the years. And they certainly have on solid state, <laughs> definitely, but rotational, not so sure. Anyway, I'll try it out, see how it goes. Yeah, that's uh, going to be a bit of a change to go to an ARM-based NAS instead of a x86-based NAS. And thanks for watching. See you all later.